It's been a while. It has. It's been a while. I'm it's been very a happy to be back. It's episode 89, and we have a bottle of Corner Creek before we tap Have you ever it. had that? Uh, I have. Now, to be fair, it's been a long time since I've had this. I, I Probably a decade. It looks very um, regal. I had a bottle of this uh, when I lived over by the mall. Beaver yeah. Bank. I used to nice have those parties and stuff. Remember? Fun. Yeah. Y'all, yeah, so I remember. I had a what bottle I can of this remember. back then. So oh, that's, there's, that's there's a, long, a chance. That's that, over 10 years ago. There's that a chance we, that we've, that had we've this done before. this before. Um, but they've changed bottles since, I will say. Oh, really? A little bit. Um, the colors and the label are roughly the same, but the oh, bottle is the different. It's a little bit more like... Is it a good pop? It's an okay pop. It's not remarkable. It's a pretty straightforward. It's okay. It's okay. It's modest. All right. Well, here's to you. You've been How's it? going through it a little bit. Life has been life, man. But, you know, cheers to more life. And I'm happy that, you know, I have you guys. And thanks for all your kind words. And, you know, let's talk trash about People, politics, movies, and all, all right. that good stuff. Let's do it. I have a question before we get too far mm-hmm. into this, though. Is it about like? Is a black it's, funerals? No, oh. no. But we can. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it, it could. We could find ours ourselves. You know, there. for context, I had a passing in, in my family. Where you know, and um, I'm learning a lot about the uh, <laughs> the funeral industry i guess or the uh oh, yeah. posthumous services sure i'm learning a lot learning a hell of a lot yeah. so much so i mean but yeah but you got to go through it yeah uh, it's it's a it's crazy yeah i'm learning that the jewish community when someone passes somebody has to sit with the body mm. all the time yeah and then they Quick turnaround, mm-hmm. Amazon Prime, three yeah. days tops, yep. tops. Yep. Some, some the next day. Crazy. Yeah. Not crazy, but like it, the like is how fast they just do everything. And you just happened upon a Jewish funeral, or you're a part? No, of No, like <clears throat> so for you know. Shout how out. did you like find yourself learning about Jewish funerals? Well, um, the person that that passed is yeah. my mom's baby sister, my sure. aunt, my aunt Kendall. Uh, thank you for everybody for the well wishes. Uh, my cousin, Brandon Wiley, shout out to Wiley Funeral Home on uh, Liberty Road. You have a cousin? I have a cousin in the industry. Yeah. That's in the industry. Yes. Yeah, so mm. he's ta- he took care of my aunt's body and, and everything like that. I, I'm i not in this. I don't know nothing about we the industry. We got him on the show. Yeah, he would love qu- to. I got questions. He actually asked me when when I we went to do the arranging, he's like, still doing the show right <laughs> i was like what oh, we gotta get him on <laughs> yeah i was like yeah he's like yo i love that show i was like yo we, we gotta get you on so shout out shout out to b wiley um so we're you know just talking just you know it was it's it, it was more untraditional because it was family handling family so we just kind of in there just sure going through the motions yeah of course and uh and uh we we're just kind of talking about the differences in, in cultures and he's like yeah man we, we jewish community gotta have somebody sit and I was like, like, is it the same person? He was like, sometimes. Like, they just kind of post, they, they post up or they take shifts and whatnot. So I was learning about that. And um, I was learning. I learned a lot about caskets. Yo. It's, a, it's an industry. It's a whole, everybody's got to work with everybody. And some of these uh, casket manufacturers have been in business for like hundreds of years. Like Purdue chicken, mm-hmm. like just this yeah. is this is what we do, and we're never gonna stop. Yeah, craziness. They've cornered the market. And that's it. Yeah, I don't know. If there's that many people trying to break into it. People are never gonna stop dying, bro. It's a great no, I business. Get, I understand model. that. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But there is a little bit of like a taboo element to it. It's right? kind of dark when you think like this. Yeah, is, this is the business. I'm you're dabbling doing. in the dark arts to an extent, right? <laughs> Dark arts. Yeah. It's a little bit. It is. It's a little bit. It's kind of like a, it's, there's a little uh, whimsical energy about ah, it. There's something. Like you got to gotta sign a, some type of contract to kind of go do, like, you about to handle some. I, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure they just go to school, but. No, I mean, I get all that. Uh, yeah. I just. That's it, for legality. You're, it's, <laughs> I'm just saying, it's late night in the funeral home. I don't know. Weird stuff happens. 
What are you conjuring up back there? I don't know. Exactly. There's dead bodies everywhere. It's a weird vibe. It's weird vibes, bro. Yeah. Gave me the heebie-jeebies. Yeah. But I but, understood. Uh, yeah, 100%. Man. But shout out to Be Wiley, man, for taking care of the family. We're going to get you on to talk about it. You can give us the real. I have a lot of questions. Yeah. That would be a very exciting yeah, yeah, yeah. interview. Yeah, well, I'll text I love him. that idea. Um. All right. So yeah. this is going to be a real left turn Yeah. from funerals. Okay. Um, but I, was I thinking, thought that was what you were going to ask. We hadn't really like talked, but yeah. well, I didn't want to like put you on the spot and like have you start like. Talking. This is this is therapy. It's been your life. For me. Yeah, I feel like for the last few weeks, two weeks. Yeah, and I didn't want to like drop you right back in. It's all it. good. Like, hey, let's start from the we're, beginning. We're 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 I, I would consider us like family. We've I, I known you for that. almost a very very long, very time. long time. As you said, we probably had this before like ten years ago. So um, yeah, you can you feel free to ask me anything. On that note, um. I started thinking about this earlier. I sent you a video um, on Instagram. <laughs> and this is going to be like a black question. But yeah. <laughs> you, do you guys beer bong? Is that a thing? In your, like culturally, <sighs> that's a, beer bonging is a big deal to the whites. Yeah. That's a, it's that's a, a thing. y'all thing. That's a y'all it's thing. A, it's a, and I've just, I was thinking about it. We just it, drink up. And a I don't bunch know. I've seen you do like the um, Freedom Funnel. Mm-hmm. Not really, it's based on a similar principle, but it's not like a traditional beer bong. And I just don't know that like I've ever So let's let's say this. See right? that happen. I have been very fortunate to He looks concerned about this walk statement, but many, carry on. Many paths in my life of and, and and uh have a really eclectic palette of friends. Yeah, right. True. So um I have done beer beer bombs yeah, yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. Do I think or can I can I confidently say that beer bonging is popular in in, in uh prominent black culture? I say no. Like you're cooking no. out, nah, everybody's no, hanging not. out. Yeah, that's something that's nah. not happening. It's no. not happening. No, no nobody nobody's out. beer bonging, nobody's shotgunning beers. Beers are yeah. beers are our chaser. Yeah. Yeah. For whatever's in your little cup mm-hmm. at okay. the at our mm-hmm. cookouts. Or so do you think it's a, is it like, is it because you guys are, you have something else in the cup or like, yeah. it seems like a beer bong, right? For like, is let's get drunk fast. <sighs> yeah. I've, but I don't have a cup of something in it. We're just drinking. We're just doing the beer bongs, right? Like It's more thing. looked at as an activity to yeah. me than a part of the, like, we're, we're, they're about to bear bong like this yeah. is like we gotta like like that it, it, for us it looks like an event uh, yeah it, that looks like that's a whole yeah thing. but why wouldn't you want to be a part of an event I don't, I don't know man it seems very dangerous I've I done mean, it and it's it's it comes more, a little fast there's more dangerous things yeah yeah but, but like, that comes it really fast like, and then it's like and, and then I guess this is where like kind of all black people turn into these germaphobes out of nowhere like. Mm-hmm. He's got the beer. He's got the beer bong. Then he's got the beer bong. Nobody's wiping the beer bong. Nobody's. Off. No, What's that's happening true. with this beer? That's like, true. Put a pin. Like, can we put a pin in that part and come back to that? Mm-hmm. Just say COVID, and I'm gonna come back. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Go ahead. Go. Go. Finish what you're saying. And so then, it's just like one of those things where, like, I've never thought to even participate. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that's what they're doing. I'm gonna open this beer. For I, me, yeah. by myself, I might like just like this. For me. It, it, it's like it's kind of like napkin, o- yeah, napkin over the cup type of thing. Where it's like, look, this is mine, and yeah, you're not been all been on challenged that. by a few cousins or whatever to chug, chug a beer, sure, but yeah, like yeah, a yeah. whole, the whole, like you know, I did a couple episodes ago with the, the, the freedom um, funnel. That's the freedom it's funnel. Not something it's, you, yeah, yeah nah. generally speaking, the beer bong. Uh, experience is going to be more of a communal thing. Yes. Like people are hyping each other up to yeah. do mm-hmm. it. If I mean, you're not just like in the corner doing it by yourself. That's a mm-hmm. separate issue. So Pool it's party, more, I've I've seen it at. Yeah. You know okay. what I'm saying? What about like uh, beer pong? Yes. Yeah. Games. Yeah. 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 That, yeah uh, absolutely. Yeah. That big thing. We yeah. integrated that into the culture. Okay. Yeah, we so kinda, that's like a, that's a thing. We changed the rules a little bit though. What's Okay. No beer in the cups. No water. Yeah. So yeah. here's the thing. I think that that's more of like a uh, an age thing, or maybe like a generation, like a millennial thing. thing. Because like when I was when I was cup. younger, like <laughs> when we were young, we played it with beer in the cups because that's just like what what you thought. Was, well, that's yeah. yeah I mean, that was just how it was being done. And then there was mm-hmm. a certain point where people were like, no, 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 no. That ball falls just on the put, floor. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Just put what, but and then chug a. Uh, there's what? a correlation. What though? 
What? We start using water in beer pong. COVID. <laughs> what? <laughs> You're saying immune systems are plummeting. Goes down because you. Maybe we wouldn't have had these issues had we. I've kept played, our tolerances a little higher. I I I can't disagree with I you. I played some funky games in the back in the day. Yeah, college days, I Apple mean, days. Dude, if you really think about it, like I played it like at like scummy spots yeah. with beer in the cup Crack and room. balls are on the ground. Oh, They're God. all over the place. Oh and for whatever reason, I'm not thinking about it at all. As a degenerate, I guess you just don't. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're just out there. I don't know. It's just a lifestyle. You're in you it. Just You're do it. it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I've, just I've, a bunch of deviants. I've never played a game of pong with beer in the cup. That it, that concept is so. I think you gotta change that. You have to do it one time. You have to do it one time. One time. One time. You won't get sick for like a year. Yeah, yeah. it's like the old watch. Ways. You it's like the old days. The, yeah. old, the old ways. You yeah, know what I mean, like you know, sometimes you gotta like just go out there and change a tire, right? You know, like you yeah, gotta no, just yeah, it's the yeah, old yeah. ways. Yeah, you know, one hundred percent. Um, I coast. You'll hate yourself tomorrow, but then you'll mm-hmm. like. That's true. Uh, you like hold a baby and the baby will like cough in your face in your mouth or something. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, I know I'm going to be sick. And then you'll be like, oh, I did beer pong like three weeks ago. I'll be mm-hmm. fine. And then you won't get sick. Mm-hmm. Simple boy math, bro. Got you. Got That's you. Right. Got you. Yeah. That's right. All right. Oh, COVID. I watched Love Island. Okay. I told you I watched a lot of crap over there because I had a lot of, That's not great. a lot of downtime, but like a lot of time in the house. Mm-hmm. I do not understand. All right. Let's step back. The show opens with the game of who who are you going to make out with Mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah. That's how the show starts. Yeah. And I watched one person kiss like four people. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I could keep saying to my wife was, we just, we just got over COVID. That's all I could think is we just got over and we didn't even get over it. It's back. I think, but I think. And they kissing like but that. But I think people have moved on. <laughs> they just don't. By and large, I think people have moved on. Also, if you're on a show, Love Island, you know the deal. Your Assume. COVID's the last thing. All right, what about, about Mono? You're not worried about it. I don't, I want, I don't think. I know people, you're worried about it, but you're not who's signing up for Love I know. Is, I'm worried Island. about What's it for it these people. Love Island? Is that what it's yeah, yeah. But I also think the people who are not worried about Mono are the people who've never had Mono before. Because if you've had mono, you got to know. You got to be worried about mono. Yeah, I don't know that there's a lot of mono outbreaks on Love on Love Island, though. I mean, I think... I, it's isolated. It's like I'm the guess, bubble. It's I'm like guessing the NBA they're bubble. doing a lot of screenings. I don't know. Maybe. I, I, I would hope. Perhaps. I, I would, there I, could be a testing process. That, I, I don't would know. Hope so. Maybe you have to go in clean. Just give them a full, you know, just full blood work. Full workout, one make physical sure, to make sure. Make sure everybody's... It's possible. I don't know that the show yeah. wants to be liable for a mono yeah, Because there is, there is no way. None of those people are like but they wouldn't that. Wouldn't that be a crazy... <laughs> wouldn't that be a crazy reality show, though? We put 15 people in a house and give them, like, all COVID at the same time. <laughs> and then they have to date. <laughs> We get everybody. Leave. We get everybody. Everybody's got COVID already. Everybody's <laughs> super sick, on the verge of death, and then we just throw them into dates. Yeah, like you have to go out at the yeah, end of this you. bridge with this other person and have a date, and we're gonna film the whole thing. You feel well, awful. You feel awful. You look awful. Super sick. Runny nose. Yeah. COVID yeah. shows up. And we'll call people. it. It's <laughs> it, it, it call it outbreak or something. You know what I mean? I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Write it, that down. It's like a crossover of like, I don't Sweaty. know. Sweaty. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Fear Factor mm. and Love Island. Like there's got to be an element of just. You get the hottest people you can think of. That's I'm right. way hotter than Love yes. Island. Yes, right. get them really ill. Mandatory And sharing. you at, or the, like ba- just the, the Bachelor, flu. but they all got COVID. Yeah, or the flu. I don't, I mean, we don't want to kill Or people. you do it vice versa. The Bachelor has COVID. And it's like, how bad do you really want to date this guy? Thousand He's a billionaire. He's got We've got to bring an element of just absurdity. You got to see what people's thresholds are. Yes. How, how much do you want this? How much do you love this person yes. that you don't know at all? Yes. We, gotta, we, we gotta, should pitch this idea. I'm not sure we, I don't know. I don't know if we can get this greenlit. Uh, well, it, well, it depends on where we're filming it. Surgeon mm. General is flying in and shutting us. I'm, sounds, I'm him pretty so sure. <laughs> Croatia sounds good to me, boys. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a couple of countries that would let this fly. What? America would let this fly. 
<laughs> if we prove it somewhere else first. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We gotta get we gotta prove that it we works. We need to get a uh before a, we bring it a in. Middle get a, Eastern. Get a greenlit Myanmar and then get the Netflix streaming rights over to yeah. the US. Yeah. Whoever are the live golf guys, we gotta get them to invest in that. 100%. They invest in everything. Boy, do they. <laughs> everything. <laughs> Sorry. All right, talk to me a little bit about loosely because I've not seen it yet. I'm probably not going to catch it in theaters at this stage in the game. It's been a chaotic Deadpool, 30 days. But did I talk about last time? and Wolverine. Did we talk about last time? I don't think we did. did. I, about, I don't know if you talked about. It. I didn't watch. Last Maybe time. you did. Give me a highlight. I, uh, okay, Deadpool and Wolverine is a is a. I've is, not seen you. It so is long. the MCU buddy cop film. I feel sign off this. love letter to the Fox universe. Yeah. That seamlessly threads into the MCU. Yeah, yeah. Whew. We did this. That's the best way. We did this. Yes, we that did that. Is. Right. I remember you. T- you, okay. you phrased right. it like this. I phrased it like like that. That's the best. That's my best non spoiler. Eight out of ten. I I give it a strong eight a out of strong eight. strong eight, eight out of ten. Right. Perfect. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say it's incredible, but it was it was done very magically. Yeah. Yeah. If that's that's a word. Yeah. Right? Magic. It felt Don't very. Uh, know that it is. Okay. It, felt, it felt good all the way through. It just felt good, right? It felt good all the way Good through. action, good CGI. Like, there weren't good surprises, yep. threaded well into the MCU, and everything kind of had an explanation, which is, that's that's important for me. Everything has to have make sense and have an, a, a, an explanation for why it's happening and, and, and what, it, what it's doing. And Ryan Reynolds really executed on, on all, all fronts on all that. All right. Very good. Have you seen anything else since then in theaters? Uh, in theaters? In theaters? No. Yeah. No, not in theaters. Yeah. Um, watched Inside Out 2 on Plex. Shout out to Josh. He's not here today. RIP, Rage in Peace. Whatever he's doing. Um, he's doing no, something. No, he's out of the country for sure. He always does. He's all, he never, like, he he's always. He's on a cruise ship. Right? <laughs> out of the country. I guarantee he's on a cruise ship. Yeah, thousands. When percent. he's not, when he's doing something rageful, he just says, I'm not making it. Yeah. yeah. That's it. <laughs> And then he comes back like, yeah, like, boys, I was, uh, <laughs> I was, you know, I was in, I, I was, was in Orlando. Was in Orlando. Was in yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, watched Inside, Inside Out too, and that was great. Um, what else? I, I binge You've through. been, you've been going down this alien pathway. Yeah, bro. Why don't you talk to me about that? All right. So. Because I'm a huge alien fan. Rami, die hard. Yeah, I was texting you as I was, as I've been engaging in my watch. Yeah. So, um, Romulus is out. Yes. Right. And before, I was never intentional in my watches of alien. Mm-hmm. So I was like, all right, I am a fan. I watch them. Maybe once, and then I never revisit it. I'm like, I'm gonna do a hard binge of all of them to go into because the story, uh, you know, the Alien franchise is very linear. Like each movie connects to. It's not like oh, a, a fr- you know, Aliens two, and it's just yeah. like a whole new crew. Like no, it's Sigourney Weaver, Aliens one through four, and then yeah. uh, Alien versus Predator, Alien versus Predator, Requiem. Oh, you're doing Alien. I did all of them. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and the last one I have, I started today, is uh, Covenant. I got I got through okay. um, uh, Prometheus today, which is like creme de la creme. Prometheus is so good. Yeah. Yeah. So it's an interesting um, series of films. Yeah. And a couple of bullet points here Go. that I think might be helpful for you. All right. Um, the movies are one and two and three. Um, and four for that matter, do kind of tie into one another, mm-hmm. but not in a like super meaningful very way. Very passively, yeah. Very passively. Like Alien and Aliens are like, we have an overlap of obviously characters, yeah. but we're really not, in my opinion, world building world, yeah. in it's- a way that is incredibly intentional to those that maybe came up with the story initially. Like, I think James Cameron was like, just hold my beer, watch this. And, and I he think did he, he did some crazy stuff. In the seventies at that, yeah. right? Was that 76 yeah, yeah, yeah. or 79? Uh, I think it was the, I want to say it was the eighties. I think alien was late seventies. Okay. Aliens so was late seventies. I think aliens or alien was late seventies. And I believe aliens is in the eighties. 80, 80 um, something. But I don't 79 think 79 to 86. There you go. I don't think that when he made that movie, it was necessarily like we're I'm gonna, about to we're gonna keep yeah we're gonna like keep building these. It was worlds. lightning in a bottle, a hundred percent. Yeah, and then Alien Three, which was David Fincher, actually yes. it was his first like 
I hate uh, it. That's, that was my least favorite. Yeah, it was his first feature film. And if you actually watch the behind the scenes on that and listen to him talk about it, there was actually a very cool concept in place. And there was a lot of very meaningful pieces that were trying to be established, but the studio ultimately stepped in and really pulled a nixed lot of those it, yeah. out and nixed a lot of that because he was a first time director and he was coming off of yeah. a James Cameron piece, which was like a tough, it was basically a lose lose for him. He was never going to get a good film out of that ultimately. And then four was a kind of a total like revamp nightmare of a yeah. uh, movie. Like it just really was each a huge movie loss. was very reflective of the genre of the more popular movies At in the, the box time. office, right? Yeah. Like Aliens was Aliens. Like I sure. think that that was kind of like the top of the box office at that time. But then Alien 2 comes out and it's just like a gun show. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. That's the Lethal Weapons at the time, 100%. Beverly Hill Cop, mm, uh okay. all those movies. And then three was very much like a uh all I it, the only movie that really stuck out to me was like American History X, right? Like it was yeah. like very not story wise, but it like, feels a little like a Mad Max or yeah, something. Like there's yeah. like a, a okay. real weird, like out of left field kind of like renegade vibe yeah. to Alien yep. Three that just doesn't fit. It feels mm. very out of place given what Alien and Aliens Ex was. Yeah. For um, everything about the Matrix was influenced. Four like is just, like a yeah. huge just it's kind of a pile of Nothing, Which nothing. Honestly, great. I I really enjoyed Resurrection, but you can you can kind of tell that the, the you know by the 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 presentation how the, yeah. where they're dated at. Yeah. And it's just it, like, it yeah. was not it was not the best of yeah. a lot of things. And then what happens is very interesting because then you go back. Then you do Prometheus and Covenant, which yeah. are Ridley Scott movies. Mm -hmm. He's the one who did Alien, the very first one. Right. And this is the in my opinion, the first real shot at actually establishing like a canon and like building out like a mythos and a and world. fixing the timeline. And yeah. Well, all of those take place before Alien. Right. Yeah, so yeah. it's a weird thing where you have like a series of movies that make you kind of think one way. And then he kind of goes back and is like, well, we're nah, going to start, gonna, we're gonna start over again. What he kind of does is he's like, I'm going to start the story over. And the first franchise is kind of like a side story. Yeah. And I'm going to start telling the real story. So yes. everything that happens with Sigourney is kind of like a side mission, mm -hmm. even though it was the original franchise. It's like yeah. kind of the same thing like they, what they did with Star Wars and, yeah. and, and, and you know, what, what, what have you. Any, any other franchise that kind of went back and started over, we're going to tell the story again. And this time you can just kind of look at it as a, as a parallel thing. Mm -hmm. And, man, Prometheus? I'm like, Phew. Yes. So this is, yes. it's interesting because Prometheus is actually a very like controversial film. Why? In the series. Well, a lot of people, and this is just my, I love Prometheus. I think it's a very important and meaningful film. It's one of my oh, favorites yeah. in the franchise. But a lot of people really feel like Alien and Aliens was like the pinnacle of it. Mm. And they want to kind of continue that storyline. So they want to kind of pick up where aliens left off. They hate the idea of Alien Ridley theory. Scott going oh. back and fixating on the creation, kind of the yeah. creation of these elements. Because obviously in Prometheus, Alien, like the xenomorph itself, is not a relevant character. Yeah. There's like the components of it all, right, are yeah. there. But people get weird because they are – I think it's just people really – the nostalgia thing kicks in and yeah. everybody just wants to kind of have alien and aliens forever and ever. Yeah. Um, which that's fine. It's fine. But I really like, I'm a big world building guy. Me, same. Yeah. And I think that's, that I think that's a millennial Gen Z so, thing where yeah. we want to know the why behind yes. our, where uh, I feel like Gen X was just kind of told to like shut up and watch. Yeah. Yeah. Where we're very much like, well, no. why does that yeah. happen? Or how did that happen? Yeah. Like you got to explain it. We want to know the back. And I think if you go even a little further back, like before our generation, I think a lot of those like demographics really feel like that was like the perf like what they had was perfect and really flawless. Flat and everything that's happening like, now is like destructive. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> it breaks it apart. Like people that yeah. people that were like in their twenties and thirties when Alien came out in the seventies. This is great. They, they think that that's like the pinnacle the peak of, of cinema like, of Alien or of what that yeah. franchise can be, and you shouldn't really ever mess with those things because yeah. it, this is as good as it can get. 
and I don't know. They're taught so. to construct, and we're taught to deconstruct and rebuild. Sure. It's hundred percent. Yeah. So I really have a, there's a special place in my heart from Prometheus and Covenant. They're special films. Fast forward to today, and we have Romulus, which I have not got to yet. I got to get through. I'm gonna get through uh, Covenant maybe tomorrow, and. Uh, have you seen it yet? Yes. You did? That's right. You did see yeah, it. Yeah. So that, yeah. I, All right. I so went, as soon as I got back from my trip, I was in the theaters literally the next day. Yeah. I'm going to make some time next week to, to see uh, that. get into it. Maybe me and the, Chanel hasn't been on board with me for the aliens. Yeah. It's a, um. She's like, nah, no. It's a tough sell. Yeah. Not going to lie. Uh, yeah. I haven't, I have can honestly say, seen none of these movies. Oh. I took, I took Emily to it. All right. Now let's let me you the aliens guy. Let me get, you, get, get, get some ex, expertise here. So the engineers, okay, the engineers created these uh, initial face huggers, right? That was they. That was the weapon that they were going to take to Earth to destroy humans. Um, the face huggers specifically, no. So what? The thing that uh, David takes back to the mm-hmm. to the ship and starts infecting everyone with, yes. right? Like that crisp that thing that was crystallized was an initial was the quote unquote initial face hugger, right? Inside that, yeah. Okay, yeah. So the plan was for to take these face huggers to Earth, because uh, right? So in Prometheus. What you're looking at in the canisters is a bioweapon of bio, sorts. It's a bioweapon. It's not technically a face hugger at that point. Like that that particular organism is something that comes out of the xenomorph. So I don't think that the engineers at any point were responsible directly for creating that specific organism. That is something that came out of the xenomorph like okay. creature. Because so, in aliens. Right. In the sequel, um, we see the queen, yeah, and she's the one that's actually producing those. The, so the eggs, yes, correct. Those like eggs that hatch the face huggers, right? right. So yeah. what is that's what I'm trying to get at. Like, what is what? A, it's just a bio weapon. So a beginning. So in I, you have not watched you watched you've not watched Covenant yet. I have, but I don't remember it. Was, okay, uh, I gotta, so there's that's my next it's very complicated, and there's layers of this in Covenant that you will find. Um, Covenant really goes into the the the, the, bio, the it biology. It expands of the, on it to a degree. All right. okay. um, the idea of is that like the engineer race or whatever is there's a loot like they get to this in certain aspects of Covenant, that the engineer race is basically at the end of its line of reproductibility or bio, like, um, like basically functionally as a society, they have to start bioengineering themselves in order to continue the race. Like they're, they're basically getting wiped out more or less from just inefficiencies in who they are from a, like yeah, the, the the race itself is no longer virile. It's not vi- it's not viable anymore. So mm-hmm. they begin doing all this bioengineering to try to basically create, like more, they try to improve upon themselves and make versions of themselves that will be able to sustain their race and basically move their people forward. Essentially, which is where the humans come from. So that's not where the humans necessarily come from. Um, so the en- like the engineers that you see like in the ship. Yeah. are supposedly these bio-enhanced versions uh, of this civilization. So gotcha. in Covenant, you kind of, when you go to the, where they all came from essentially, right? You go to like yeah. this like planet, you see this race of people that are there. Those people are the ones that created the engineers. The engineers. And the engineers are like bio-enhanced versions of them. So yeah. like if we created bio-enhanced versions of ourselves, gotcha. for example, that were capable of sustaining long-term space flight that didn't require oxygen or whatever, like there's a certain point in human like civilization. Like a superhuman. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, where we would start creating superhumans for the purpose of sending them into environments that are 
not hospitable, right? Test so, tube, baby. A hundred percent. So when you see like the engineers in the ships and stuff like that, mm. the idea behind that is that those are enhanced versions they were created of to who you see specifically on cover, to on fulfill a job. Right. Yes, mm. Gotcha. But this bio um, agent or weapon or whatever it may be, like there's an idea that they were were they taking this weapon or was it a weapon? Were they taking this to other planets and seeing what they could create with it? Were they trying to infect other species with it? Mm. Some of that stuff's not totally clear, I don't think, in the kind of like canon gotcha. of it all. Uh. Um, but it is clear that it got out of hand in a couple of situations. Like they allude to that in Prometheus that they had mm. this – off-site location where they were storing and housing a lot of this chemical or whatever. Obviously, there was an outbreak of some yeah. sort and people died. Yeah. Um, so I don't, you know, kind of TBD. Like there's a lot of places that this all kind of goes, um, which the Alien TV show, I saw which comes out stuff. on FX, yeah. um, I think is going to try to plug even more of those holes. But that's where it gets like all of that stuff is not a part of Alien. Aliens, right. Yeah. Alien 3, Alien this 4. is the. None of that stuff is has any relevancy in any of those movies. Like it's not a thing. Like Ridley Scott went back and tried to kind of unravel a little bit of how we got the xenomorph. Yeah. Period. Right. Yeah, I'm 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 on board, man. I'm I'm all about it. So it gets a little chaotic. It's very complicated, and I don't, I, I don't claim to. I'm kind of disappointed because when I went, I specifically wanted to watch it in release order, and not chronological order, because I like seeing how the production of the film is uh, represents the time yeah. that it was created. Yeah, with you know, again, when I talked about like you know, Aliens Resurrection being very much Matrixy, um, but. Uh, in that order, Predator, Alien versus Predator, and Alien versus Predator Requiem are supposed so, to be the first movies in the timeline. Yeah, so those yeah. technically, and I then mean, they got wiped I guess depending out. on yeah. who you talk to, but I think technically speaking, those are not considered a part of the canon. Right? Yeah. Uh, to to uh, really Scott, those movies don't exist. Yeah, I mean, Which to is, to the entire, like, Alien, all the Alien movies, like, if you look at them, like, chronologically, like, right. technically Alien versus Predator. And didn't those happen. Aren't really a part Alternate of it. universe, we'll yeah, say. Yeah, kind of alternate universe. Happen. And then if you really get, like, into it, there's a video game, Alien Isolation. I heard about it, yeah. Um, which is incredible. That technically is considered canon by Ridley right. Scott and others. Um, and there's some comic books that are considered I was, that was my I was well. about to say, man, if you're, if you are, you know, everyone that listens to the show knows I'm a, I'm a big comic book guy. Uh, Marvel is doing a bunch of alien crossovers right now. Mm -hmm. And the first issue of Avengers versus Aliens just wrapped, and it was great. Damn, that's amazing. One, uh, just a kind of a, you know spoiler. The the book has been out for two weeks now. One of the xenomorphs merges with a symbiote, yeah, and oh. then merges to Miles Morales Spider Man. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Jesus, that's Christ. wild. It's wild. <laughs> Yeah, oh, it's wild. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. Pretty and that's how the book crazy. wraps. That's just the first issue. It wraps with that happening. Yeah. And so, yeah. yeah. So, and the, and the cross, like the crossover of like Xenomorph, I guess, to be fair, like the crossover of the genetics of Xenomorphs with other species does kind of happen in the third version, in the third movie and the fourth movie to kind of present some of that. With the, with the, the dog and then yeah. Ripley's um Like the bioengineering yeah. piece of it all. Um, so that does kind of influence, I think, a little bit of like how Prometheus and Covenant are trying to kind of establish like the whole bioengineering yeah. component. Like I think that, you know what I mean? So they, they are important to a certain extent. Um, and weirdly enough, they actually do have a little bit of that, I think, in the Alien vs. Predator series because there is like a Predator-Alien crossover that yeah. does happen at some point. So that idea is um, – Yeah, there's not really any kind of is, like – Is well-established. Um, origin story in Alien vs. Predator. It's just kind yeah. of like they captured one and, you know, this is what they did with mm -hmm. it. It's not – it doesn't – you know, if – I can understand that if it went into that – the predators were 
creating the xenomorphs yeah. or what have you. They yeah. were the engineers of it. But it's really like you just captured one and just yeah. were like, I was going to do this as, you know, and I think, a sport. I think a lot of people got upset with the idea of the xenomorphs not being not being intelligent. Hello. Hello. What up? Oh, sorry, are you recording? Yeah, yeah, come on in. What's up? No, oh, you're here now. Come on. Come on in. We're talking about alien versus Welcome. predator. We're talking about aliens. Aliens. Oh, I can bring a lot to that conversation. Yeah. We're going to wrap up here in a second anyway because yeah, we got to get ready for the game. Uh, yeah, you see that Taylor's This wearing, is Emily, by the way. This is no, you're not on camera. I'm introducing you to... Oh, got it. He was saying it. Oh, yeah. There we go. This is my other half, Abrion. There we go. It's a family reunion. Anyway, uh, once you see Romulus, yeah. we'll catch up. It'll be great. I'll check it out this uh, next week. We've got a wrap anyway. We've got a Ravens game. Uh, Kickoff is we're tonight. We're kicking off in just a second we're gonna here. We're going to kick the Chiefs' ass. You're going to go with a win. Hey, right, we're running the ball, man. Okay. All right. There it is. Run the ball. We're going to do what we didn't do in the Super Bowl, and then yeah. we're going to get to the playoffs and not do it again. That's right. I'll That's go with you do. on that. I'll go with you on that. Um, and then real quickly, Corner Creek. I'm, I enjoyed not, it. It was I'm very nice. It. Yeah. yeah, it's good. The only problem is there is absolutely no information online about, about this whiskey. I like, prefer I that. The dogs. I can't find five going crazy. I can't find anything about the distiller. I can't find anything. It's a it's a mystery bottle. Yeah, bro. Yeah. I and the distiller that they said makes it. I can't. They don't have it listed as their brand. Yeah. So I don't know who makes this, but it. It's pretty good. Yeah. It's pretty good. It's yeah. not like remarkable, but it's a pretty, pretty decent bottle. It's nice to drink. It's got a little bit more flavor than like sure off the good. shelf. You know. I'm baseline. not mad at it. I enjoyed it, man. It's nice. Very smooth. Very good. All right. Yeah. Well, until whenever we do this again. Right. Cheers. Cheers to you, buddy. See you All on right. two weeks. That's right. Mm.